say what I meant to start out this morning. Uh, first, to thank you for this event, and also um, let's think globally, and then we're going to go locally. So I work in the Arctic, and I can see what's happening up there. Uh, of course, um, losing our ice sheets, our sea ice, and that's impacting our local weather. So we're going to go from the global down to the local with this. And I just want to remind everyone that there's, there's two ways we can change the temperature of the planet. One of them is this way. This is global cycles of, of glacial and interglacial change that happen on tens of thousands of years. So when someone says, oh, that's just natural climate variability, that is happening on tens of thousands of years. You know, 20,000 years ago, we had a mile of ice over Hadley. So imagine that. Uh, a mile of ice over Hadley because of these cycles. And these cycles um, give us uh, the normal glacial, interglacial uh, cycles that we've had. And, and we can see those here in the bottom axis is uh, the last 800,000 years. And then on the right hand side, you see the CO2. And you can see that there is a normal range for, again, normal cycles. 180, 280, 180, 280. Think of it like your cholesterol number. Um, yeah, so it, it, there's this normal cycle, but the, and over the over these time periods. But what's the problem is we're in this box here. So if this was your cholesterol number, <laughs> and you're already at four, uh, approaching 420, your doctor would be concerned. Okay. So we're in this vertical. Section. So this next figure I'm going to show you is, in fact, um, uh, this that section of that box. And I just want to put this in perspective about my family. So if, if you go back to when my grandmother was born in 1898, the CO2 in the atmosphere outside here was 295 parts per mil. And then when my parents were born in 1925 or so, it was 305. And then when I was born in 1955, um, it was at 313. My children were born here in Amherst um, in, in around uh, 550. And today we're up at approaching 420. So this is like this, <laughs> on the scale of things. And I just want you to think about the fact that's just in the duration of my family, rounded off to 120 years. So we have to think about where are we going in the next couple of decades with these numbers. Um, and, and this is our concern, and this is why we're here. We need to get off fossil fuels and go to clean energy as fast as possible. So let's get local here and think about what's happening to us here. And I just always love this diagram. Um, uh, when we think about weather and climate, they are two different things. Weather is what you see out the window. Good weather is always followed by bad weather. Bad weather is always followed by good weather, right? Um, and so the weather in this diagram is the dog. The dog is wandering all over the place, up and down on this diagram. Climate is the owner. The owner is walking on a trajectory, and that's uh, climate. It's averaged over, technically, it's 30 years of, and that's how we think about climate change. And that's what we're concerned about. The weather is getting worse and more severe, that's true. So, so just think about the, the dog is the weather, and the climate is the owner. So if we look at a figure like this, um, this is for Hampshire County, um, and shows you the temperature. Uh, this is the temperature since 1895. And you can see the dog, the weather, going up and down. You can see the extremes. And then you can see the trend. You can see the owner. We are getting warmer by a couple of degrees Fahrenheit here since 1885, and the trajectory is for wetter and warmer in the future. Here is the precipitation. So here again, the dog is the, the, the up and down is the dog going back and forth. The owner is the blue line showing you the trend in, in climate. We're getting wetter. And you can see that some of the wettest years on record are, and even across the entire graph, are really within uh, in the last decade or so. So we're getting wetter. And we are also getting a lot more rain at once. So you can see that here increases in extreme heavy precipitation are increasing across the country except for Hawaii. Hawaii is an anomaly. But in the Northeast, we've seen a 71% change in the extreme events 
and you know what those are like. I know that my, I now know that my basement will flood if we have more than seven inches in 24 hours. <laughs> Been there, done that. So uh, uh, this is also a concern, and we all remember these storms, uh, whether it's uh, flooding out on the coast, whether it's that amazing picture of of the river almost going over the Bridge of Flowers in, in um, Shelburne Falls. That was just amazing, mouth dropping for sure. So we see these events. So what's the future? The future is we, we have a different uh, choices. Um, we have multiple futures we can choose. One of them is low emissions, which is what we really need to be on, or no emissions, zero uh, emissions, which would um, raise temperatures just a few uh, degrees Fahrenheit. On the other hand, if we don't change the way we're operating, um, and, we, and we don't change globally how we're operating, we're going to get uh, much higher uh, temperatures. So much warmer, much wetter. And of course, um, this is kind of an interesting diagram. Hopefully you can understand the red line if we pass into the future. Um, in the future, it's very possible on the top that in the winter, the coldest um, the coldest winters in the future are going to be the, like the warmest years now. Just think about the fact that we may, in, in two or three decades, look back and 2022 was the coolest record of the, de of the century. You know, we, this is what we don't want to have happen. And, and even in the future, again, the hottest summers, the cooler summers are going to be hotter than anything we've had recently. That's the projection for uh, these areas. And, and it, just to put it in a geographical sense, wetter, warmer, we're going to start to feel in the future as we get out to uh, 2040, 2070, so when today's elementary children are your age, that kind of time scale, the climate's going to feel more like South Carolina here. So, so we have to, that's, this is why there's urgency, because the trajectory we're on is not necessarily uh, a good one, and it's happening pretty rapidly. Um, and the number of days above 90 degrees is going to increase. So that, again, is part of this uh, projection, and you can see the numbers there for, uh, at least for Boston. So, um, so what are we going to do? The, the point is we do need to be part of the process of, of decrease getting ourselves off of fossil fuels. We've already, in a global sense, we've raised the temperature of the planet uh, 1.2 degrees centigrade. So on this little chart, you see the thermometer, and you can see that if we're going to keep ourselves below the Paris Agreement of 1.5, which came from the IPCC, we've only got a little bit of wiggle room left. Only a little bit of wiggle room. And those little boxes up, and up there that show different policy and action, 2030 targets, pledges, and so on, those are all well above that one, one and a half degrees. And unfortunately, unfortunately, it's where the different countries, their pledges are right now. So I've been, I was just two weeks ago, just talking with um, negotiators from mountainous countries, Peru, Nepal, and so on. Try, they're wanting to know the science, and then how can we make an argument about these water towers? The glaciers in the high mountains are feeding the indigenous people. How do we keep those glaciers from melting? And so we really need to get that target and act fast. That's why we're here. Really, let's do this, because that's what we really need to do. And in every little, never think you're too small. Hadley, mighty Hadley, we just heard about that. Um, we need to do this uh, everywhere, and it's happening. So we have this, this um, to make these changes, make them feasible, we know it's possible, we have the technology, the main thing is us and, and our policy makers. And um, just to, most of you have heard of Greta Thunberg um, and, uh, and these kinds of projections that show where we're going to go in the future. And these projections, by the way, always end at 2100. Have you ever noticed that? Um, guess what? The world will keep warming beyond 2100. <laughs> Um, but by 2100, Greta Thunberg will be almost 100 years old. So again, just think about in the lifetime of a, how fast these changes are going to happen and the choices we have to make. So here's the thing of optimism. I don't know if you've ever heard of the S-curve of technology change. 
Um, when I learned about this, I got really excited. Suddenly my optimism came back. Because everything we do follows an S-curve. And if you look on the bottom, it goes from when nobody has one to everyone has one, when it's the normal. So you can think about electricity, the adoption of radio, color TV, computers, the internet. We all go, it's about 15, 10 to 15 years. And what's interesting is the adaptation is actually increasing with time. So if you look at the far right, how, just think about when we went from nobody had a cell phone to everybody has a cell phone. That's really fast. And if we look at the adoption of, you know, whether it's the telephone, uh, anything, clothes dryers. I remember when I was growing up, I realized in first grade that I was the only family with a dishwasher, right? Mm. Nobody else had one <laughs> in my little town. So we are on the bottom of the S curve with green technology. We're going up that hill, and we're gonna, we're gonna go there fast, and we can do this. That's what's op optimistic. I have solar panels on my house. I took out a loan, put the solar panels on, paid them off in five years. And this winter, um, sorry for Cerner Company, but I didn't use any oil. Um, so I didn't have to turn on my furnace. I ran my entire house off my solar panels using mini splits. And now for the first time, my house also has air conditioning. You know, it's possible to do that. And we, and we paid it off in five years. So I think uh, this is changing. PV squared is right here in Hadley. <laughs> um, and so uh, let me end here by just saying, um, we think of ourselves as on the Earth. I want you to talk to people about being in the Earth. Because if you put an I in the middle of Earth, that's the air. We all share this air. We share the atmosphere. We are part of the ecosystem. Here. We're the animals in the ecosystem. And we need to act responsibly in that. So just remember, we're not on the planet, we're in the planet, we're in the Earth system. And then we have to take ownership of that and treat the planet better than we have, uh, uh, than we have in the past. So here's my message really is we have to be responsible for future generations um, who um, and, and just think about the, the fact that some of these changes, particularly sea level rise, is not reversible. It's not going to be reversible. But there are things we can do. And I always like, maybe you don't like Jerry Brown, but I like this quote from him. And that is, don't relax. Don't feel good about yourselves. See how bad it is. And then make it good. And then feel good about that. Thank you very much.